When AMD launched their 4000 series Ryzen mobile CPUs earlier this year, this Asus ROG Zephyrus G14 was supposed to be the best example of what AMD's new lineup had to offer. So a ton of CPU performance uh, with an exceptional battery life in a nice and compact chassis. But one thing the first G14s didn't have was this dot matrix LED cover that Asus showcased at CES last January. So basically they added this layer of uh, programmable LEDs to the top cover, uh, which you can use to put your images on, to put your company logo on, to do some useful information scrolling around, uh, GIFs and so on. So they pretty much added something fun that you can just play around with. Now, in terms of specs, uh, these uh, anime matrix models don't really differ from the original G14s. I have the top spec model here that has an AMD Ryzen 9 4900HS processor, an RTX 2060 Max-Q graphics card, 16 gigs of RAM, one terabyte SSD, and a 14 inch Quad HD IPS display that has a 60 Hertz refresh rate. Now these specs, without the LED cover should cost you between 15 and 1600 dollars or 16 and 1700 euros and if you want the LED cover expect to pay around 500 dollars or euros more just for that feature. Now since I didn't get the chance to review the original G14 I was quite curious to see if it really is as good as everyone says it is so let's see all the results and see how it compares to other laptops on the market. Let's go! This video is brought to you by the Elgato Wave 3 a premium quality microphone specifically made for streamers. It combines an excellent recording quality with a complete digital mixing solution that lets you easily control all your audio sources like game sounds and voice chat or even music with one single device. Check it out using the links in the description below. Design-wise, I think Asus did a really good job here with the G14. It is thin and light uh, with a pretty simple sleek design, so it is really nice to look at and it is actually really well built as well. It is all metal, it's sturdy, and the dark gray just looks very elegant, at least in my opinion. It is supposed to be a laptop for gamers, but I really don't think it will look out of place in an office. Now, the really nice thing is that the material isn't that sensitive to fingerprints, and that is something that personally bugs me with many high-end laptops, like the Razer Blade, for example, where you pay a lot of money, you get this beautiful design that just looks instantly dirty the moment you touch it. Now this G14 can definitely take a little bit more use before it needs a good clean. Now the anime matrix cover makes this G14 a little bit thicker and a little bit heavier than the base model, but I really doubt that anyone will notice this 0.2 of a centimeters or 100 grams. It is still just under two centimeters thick and it weighs only 1.7 kilos, so it is very much so a super portable laptop. You can easily open it with one hand and when you do, the bottom lifts off the surface, uh, giving it a bit more room to breathe. The material on the inside is a really good choice as well, again with metal that isn't too sensitive to fingerprints and it just feels very comfortable under your hands. There is barely any flex in the screen or in the keyboard and the keys themselves feel quite good as well. There's a decent amount of travel and they're not too light, which again I really like making it a very nice laptop to work on and to game on. Now, I also appreciate the dedicated volume keys and the dedicated button to open the Armory software. Uh, I just think that the uniformity of the white backlight should have been a bit better. The touchpad is fairly smooth and it just works well. Uh, they could have made it a bit larger in my opinion, but it is good enough, uh, especially considering the fact that most people will use a mouse anyways. In terms of connectivity, you get two USB 3 ports on the right, uh, along with a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port. And on the left, uh, there is a power connection, a HDMI port, a combined audio jack, and a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port that also supports uh, DisplayPort 1.4. I do think they should have added another Type-A port so gamers can plug their mouse into the left side instead of having it on the right side, taking up all that valuable mouse space. Now by default you get a 180 watt power adapter, but the USB port on the left can be used with a 65 watt uh, type C charger as well. So you can just buy and use a compact charger that you can just bring to school or to the office and you can leave the bigger charger at home. But let's talk about the feature that really sets this laptop apart. 
the LED cover. Now you can control it with the Armory Crate software and by default, Asus gives you a couple of presets like an RG logo, a meteor shower effect, or the option to just show the battery percentage or the time. Now there are some basic text options as well, so you can have your game name or your favorite quotes just scrolling over the top and uh, you can just import your own images, your own GIFs or animations as well. Now, because the cover only has white LEDs, not all images and animations will work well, so you will have to try a few and experiment a bit. Most of the time I would say the software will just manage to turn your own files into something nice without any major effort. Now I personally think uh, it's really cute to see and I guess that you can find some useful things to do with it, especially if you want to promote your work in any way or drag it around events with your logo or your name. But I cannot help but thinking it's just a gimmick as well and a very expensive one too, given that you need to spend $500 more for that LED feature alone. As for the CPU performance, uh, everything that was said about the new Ryzen CPU so far applies to this laptop as well. It, it just shows exceptional performance uh, both in the single core benchmarks and in the multi core benchmarks. Now this uh, 4900HS is a 35 watt chip, while the processor with an H at the end of their name are 45 watt chips. So, Considering the fact that this is a lower power model, the results are actually pretty impressive. Now I do want to point out that unlike with the desktop CPUs, there is not that much difference between Ryzen 9 and Ryzen 7 mobile models as they both have 8 cores. So if you see a Ryzen 7 4800HS option for less money, I would probably just go for that one. In terms of gaming, the G14 is interesting as well as it uses a 65 watt GeForce RTX 2060 Max-Q. Now typically Max-P model would use 115 watts, Max-Q model between 80 and 90. So again, even though it's a lower power version, the game performance here is pretty much in line with an 80 watt 2060 Max-Q. It is just ahead of the GTX 1660 Ti and the G15 and just behind the 90 watt RTX 2060 in the tough A15 but a fully powered RTX 2060 in the GL65 is of course much faster. Still, I would say it's a great level of performance, letting you play all the AAA titles at reasonable settings or simpler games at high frame rate. So even though it's a tiny little machine, you can easily call this a proper gaming laptop. Now for the display, uh, most G14s will come with 120 Hz 1080p display or 60 Hz Quad HD display that I have here. And it's a pretty nice panel. It has reasonable but not exceptional brightness. It has great contrast, good color gamut, and a pretty good color calibration out of the box. Now it feels smooth for a 60 Hz panel, and it doesn't really look off if you set your games to 1080p. If most of what you do is game, I would say get the faster 1080p screen, but for those of you that want to use your laptop for productivity as well, this Quad HD resolution on a 14 inch laptop is really nice and I actually wish there were more laptops on the market with this option. In terms of thermals and noise, uh, the G14 does get a bit hot to running 90 degrees on the CPU and 81 on the GPU in performance mode. Now noise levels are pretty reasonable at 45.2 decibels, which is definitely audible, but most gaming laptops get even louder. Now setting it to turbo mode uh, boosts the CPU, GPU and fan speeds even more, but while the GPU temps remain at reasonable 82 degrees, I'm really not comfortable with the CPU running at 95 average in that mode. So if you're just stressing your CPU and not your GPU, thermals, noise and clock speeds actually look pretty good. Although I noticed no difference swapping between turbo and performance mode here, which is a bit odd. I think Asus should reconsider some of the software tuning here, especially giving us the option to get those higher GPU boost speeds without getting the CPU to run this hot. Now the cooling should be able to handle that, it's just a question of better tuning. There is actually a manual fan tuning option uh, which you can combine with very interesting thread on Reddit uh, on how to make some improvements to the G14 yourself and I'll link that below for anyone interested in diving a bit deeper into this. So it is definitely possible and it would be nice if Asus just made it 
default. It is not hard to clean, repair or upgrade the, the G14, just remove the 14 screws from the bottom and you have access to most components. You can clean the fans, you can replace the battery, you can replace the SSD, you can replace the Wi-Fi chip too, which is hidden under the SSD. Unlike on the G15, you cannot really add a second SSD, which kind of makes sense uh, as space is a limiting factor here. And unfortunately, half of the memory is soldered on the back of the motherboard. Now, technically, you can still upgrade one DIMM, but I'm not sure how that will affect overall performance of this laptop. The battery life on this is pretty good. Uh, you get seven and a half hours of watching Netflix and between eight and nine hours of light use. Now, that is a bit less than others have reported with their G14, which is probably because of the high resolution display on this model. So uh, if you want a bit more battery life, I would go for the 1080p G14. Now, this is the battery life with the LED cover turned off and Asus does uh, turn those LEDs off by default when it's not connected to the charger, but you do have an option to actually change that setting yourself and you should not do that. In the reasonably heavy PC Mark A battery test, the G14 lasted around four and a half hours with the cover off or three hours and 17 minutes with the cover on. So there's definitely a big battery hit if you want to show off your LED cover while on the go. If you want a webcam, too bad as G14 doesn't have one and you will have to look elsewhere. But they did put in some pretty nice speakers in my opinion. Now so many gaming laptops I tested recently just sounded very either anemic or very grindy and this one actually sounds quite nice overall. It has a good volume, a good clarity and a good amount of bass so you can easily watch some YouTube or watch a movie or two without cringing. If you're looking for some reliable and fast external storage, SSDs are the way to go. That's about it and I think I understand why so many users and so many reviewers are in love with the original G14, considering how small it is but still packs a lot of power and how good the build quality and the finish are. So it is one of the nicest laptops of 2020, at least so far. Now you can get some uh, even smaller work laptops and you can get some more gaming oriented laptops for the same money or even less, but I don't really think there is anything that combines those two without any real compromises. Now I think Asus can improve on their software tuning a tiny bit and the lack of webcam uh, might be an issue for uh, people especially nowadays when people are required to work from home as much as possible. But that's pretty much the only thing that I can really complain about today. Uh, as for the LED cover, uh, it is nice that Asus is implementing something new and now you have an option to get uh, these eye-catching LEDs if you want to. But if it really ends up costing $500 more, uh, it would be really hard to justify it, especially since it affects the battery life as well. I mean, it is very cute, so you might find some use of it, especially if you are a PR person or if you're a content creator trying to catch as much attention as possible. But for the rest of us, it is just an expensive gimmick and I would just go for the original G14 instead. Now that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments down below what do you think about this uh, G14 and would you get it for yourself? Don't forget to give me a like and subscribe to this channel for more. Bye guys.